Namaste. Welcome to part 2 of Flutter Calendar Tutorial. Thank you all for engaging in my previous calendar tutorial. Thank you for your comments and interactions. So a lot of you guys wanted to know how to dynamically add events in Flutter Calendar. That is why I'm creating this tutorial. So I'm beginning where we left off in the previous tutorial. However, I have made some modifications. So the modifications are available in my GitHub repository in the part two branch. So the modifications are first, the table calendar is upgraded to 2.2.1. This is absolutely required because older versions of table calendar that we were using did not support dynamic events. And I've also added shared preference as dependency. So here we'll be dynamically saving and loading events from shared preferences. So for the sake of simplicity, I'm using shared preference in this tutorial. However, you can use either Firebase or any other persistence medium or any other database to store your events and load them dynamically. And in main.dart, in home page, I've also added two functions, helper functions, that will help to encode and decode our events map. So this will help us convert our events map into a string that we can save to set preference and load it from set preference. Let us get started. First, let us do few setups. Let us create a variable that keeps our events in table calendar event is a events is a map of key date time and value list dynamic where list of where this list is the list of events for that day let's initialize this events as an empty map and in table calendar let us assign events as underscore events now let us add a floating action button in our scaffold that will allow us to load a dialog from which we can add events to the selected date so floating action button Add on pressed for now it's empty so on pressed we'll show our dialog so down here let's create a method so add dialog in here so dialog context context builder will be dialog child let's use alert dialog alert dialog for dialog content will be text fill let's not give any decorations just give a text field and let's give it actions and for now just use a save button flat button child text save on pressed nothing um, this is alert dialog let us do this okay now let us create a controller for our event field so up here let us create a text editing controller underscore event controller let us initialize that text editing controller and down here in the text field let us assign controller event controller okay 
Okay, now here on save, on pressed save, what we'd like to do is if underscore event controller dot text is empty, then just return. If not, underscore events. So first We'll check if underscore events so our controller is a table calendar controller dot selected day so we'll be adding the event for the selected day if this is not equal to null if this is not equal to null then what we'll do is underscore events underscore controller dot selected day dot add underscore events controller dot text so we'll add a new event else if that is null then we need to create that object that is controller dot selected day that means if there are no any previous events so this will be equal to our event controller dot text okay. let us wrap this always set state so let's move this inside set state okay and in on pressed here so dialer call so dialer so let me hot restart because we have changed many state variables and here let's say I selected 27 and let me add a event test event let's press save okay so let's see we don't have any error okay so it's showing an event marker so there is event let me do few things if this is successful let me event controller dot clear next navigator dot pop that way when I add test event to save okay there are two events again let's add for this test events marker are showing now what we'd like to do is we'd like to print the events of the selected day down here so for that what we'll do is we'll create another variable here list dynamic selected events selected events is equals to empty and whenever the day is selected set state so in table calendar on day selected property is set state selected events is equal to events so here we get events now down here after table calendar inside this column let us use underscore selected events dot map event so our event is just a string so we'll use list style title text event we'll show event and this we should use a spread operator three dots the method map was called on null so let me hot restart because we changed state okay there are no events right now so let me add a event and okay so when I select this state I see the event for this state let me add another event for this let's add again another event on this now when I select this I see the events on the selected date 
now let us see how we can persist those events into shared preference so let me set up shared preference first here shared preferences prefs and let's call init prefs function from here i mean in its prep function make it async yeah. first what we'll do is we'll load events from set preferences so for that prefs equal to set preferences dot get instance next underscore events is equals to map dot from json dot decode so prefs dot get string let's use the key ev mts events and this will give us an error because of this date time so json decode and encode cannot directly convert date time so We'll wrap this with these helper methods. So wrap this with decode map helper method. And here, if this is null, then we pass a empty map string, empty JSON string. Let's use set state here. So it loads events. from shared preference x whenever we add new events we'd like to save those to the shared preference so here down here preps dot set a string key is events and value is json encode and use our function here again encode map underscore events okay so let us hot restart finally so there were already few events i added during testing in the shared preference so i am seeing those here let me add new events for 28 event of 28 Again, let me add event on 26, 26. So when I select those events are so on, let me hot restart. So these events should be persisted and loaded from set preferences. So you can see the events marker. And if we press here, if we select the dates, we can see those events. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. This is how easy it is to load events dynamically and save them by using table calendar.